Hello everyone and welcome to your lesson of physics and in this one video here I'm going to solve some of the questions from designing an experiment. Now this is the new topic that has been recently added in your ADP for your ADP uh, paper syllabus which is a paper 4. Uh, also the weighted or the total marks for the paper have now been increased from 30 to 40 and one of the reason is because they have added a new uh, question in it which would be about designing an experiment so you'll need to conduct an experiment theoretically I mean you have to just uh, write down the description of the experiment that you would conduct in order to find a relation between two quantities so here I have some of the sample questions the first one is from the specimen paper 2023 that is shared by the Cambridge and also a couple of questions more once again from the sample questions that have been shared by the Cambridge so here we have the first one uh, in this one question you it's really important that you read out the whole statement first I mean you should make sure that you understand what are the things or what is the experiment that you need to complete or what experiment needs to be conducted and what quantities or the relation between what quantities have to be calculated this is the most important thing so generally the question is of six marks can be of five marks but minimum of five marks it can be six marks seven mark here we have the first one so we first of all we try to understand what is the experiment all about and what do we need to conclude from the experiment a student places a small metal container inside a large metal container as shown in figure 4.1 so this is a small metal container which contains the liquid and outside you have a large metal container so kind of a box in a box situation there's an air gap between the two containers you can see between the two containers you have the air gap the student investigates the size the uh, investigates the effect of the size of the air gap on the rate of cooling of hot water now this is a bottom line this is what we need to conclude and it reads that plan an experiment to investigate the effect of the size of air gap between the small metal container and the large metal container on the rate of cooling of the hot water so what they're trying is trying to say is what happens if you change the size of the air gap then what happens to the rate of the cooling so if I increase the air gap will the rate of cooling increase or decrease you don't have to answer what would be the conclusion you just need to design an experiment in order to come to that conclusion the conclusion itself is not part of the question all right you don't have to answer that increasing the air gap air gap the rate of cooling would increase or decrease no that's not the part of the question just need to design an experiment which would enable you uh, to establish or to figure out the effect of chaining the air gap on the rate of cooling the apparatus is given small metal container you can see on the figure number of metal containers of different diameters so you you see the outer container is of this one diameter there are plenty of other containers which are there basically by which you can change the size of the air gap so if you use the outer container as a container with even bigger diameter then the size of the air gap would be increased so these number of containers are there so you can increase the size of the air gap thermometer is there because you need to understand the rate of cooling you'll need to find out how much temperature has been dropped so for that one you need to find the initial temperature and the final temperature and for this thing you need a thermometer to measure the temperature you need a stopwatch in order to find out how much time you're giving 
for this thing for the temperature to be dropped all right the marrying cylinder is there to marry the amount of liquid or the amount of water that you pour in the container a supply of hot water you're not required to do this investigation all right we don't need to investigate what happens or what is the final conclusion we just need to plan an experiment so in in the plan you need to briefly explain how to carry out the investigation state the key variables to control key variables to control mean what are the factors or what are the quantities that should be constant to make a fair comparison this is called the key variables to control so the quantities that need to be kept constant to make a fair comparison for example you are trying to find out which one of these two person is faster the person a person b and we let them have a race what is the key factor or what is the control variable that would enable a fair comparison the answer is one of them can be that both of these guys cover the same distance let's say 100 meters both of them are allowed to run 100 meters if one if the distance for one of them is different then that might not be a fair comparison also both these guys are made to run on the similar surfaces or on the same surface if you change the surface for the first one let's say the first one is running on a smooth surface and the second guy is running on a rocky surface that's not a fair comparison so that would be a control variable as well that the surface or the track is same anyway then the mo uh, most important thing is we need to draw a table by which we have to display the readings that we have uh, recorded explain how we use the readings to come to the conclusion and from the table or from the data how would you use those readings to come to the conclusion what is the conclusion not the part of the question how would you reach to a conclusion is a part of the question a diagram is not required but you may draw once one if it helps your explanation all right so i'm going to uh, show you the explanation first all right so we take a small container and fill it with the hot water which is placed inside a large container so that leaves an air gap between the two containers the starting temperature is measured with a thermometer After exactly 10 minutes, I measured the temperature once again. So we need to ensure that for both of the cases or for all the cases, we measure the temperature after equal interval of time to make a fair comparison. Then I perform the same experiment using larger outer container. And what happens if I use larger outer container? It gives me a larger air gap. What are the control variables? I need to ensure that the starting temperature of hot water and the volume of hot water has to be same in all cases. Alright. If the starting temperature is different for the different cases, for the smaller air gap, for the larger air gap, that is not a fair comparison you have to make a fair comparison so the starting temperature of the water has to be same and the amount of water also has to be same after 10 minutes I find the decrease in temperature by subtracting the final temperature and the initial temperature the decrease in temperature after 10 minutes for each case will correspond to the rate of cooling The air gap which has the largest decrease in temperature has the fastest rate of cooling. So the more the drop in the temperature in that 
specific time interval which has to be same for all cases the more the drop in the temperature the faster would be the rate of cooling and then you have to make the table for example we use the smaller small outer metal container it gives us small air gap then we find out the starting temperature of the water we ensure that the starting temperature is same for example 25 you don't need to fill the table you just need to draw a table with the column headings filling the table is not part of the question if you want to you can but why would you spend extra time over here let's say the starting temperature is 25 the final temperature after cooling is let's say it cooled to 10 degrees celsius what is the decrease in temperature 15 in how much time let's say 10 minutes so starting temperature for the large container is just the same the final temperature you note know down from the thermometer you take the difference it has to be done in the same time the container for which or the air gap for which there's more drop in the temperature or decrease in the temperature will have faster rate of cooling this is how we reach to the conclusion in this one so once again this question is off as you can see six marks so the marks are allocated for the table for uh, mentioning the control variable for mentioning the apparatus or the description how would you carry out the investigation and how would you read the conclusion all right so here we have the next question which is also about the same topic designing an experiment uh, so this one question is from the topic of lenses the converging lenses used in a school physics laboratory are made with a variety of thickness and have different focal length the focal length f of the lens can be calculated if u which is the distance between the lens and the object and v which is the distance between the lens and the image on the screen are known and then you can find the focal length by using the formula f equals to uv times a uh, u times v divided by u plus v once again what are u and v they have mentioned over here these are the distances from the lens u represent distance from the lens of the object we represent distance from the lens of the image that is formed on the screen all right so what the plan is uh, we have to plan an investigation to determine the relation between the thickness t of the lens and the focal length f of the converging lens all right so the simple thing is how does the focal length of the lens depend on the thickness of the lens this is what we need to figure out so we have the lens of different dimensions different thickness and if we increase the thickness of a lens or if we have a lens of the uh, if we have a thicker lens what would be the focal length of that lens compared to the focal length of the lens of having less thickness or the thinner lens so how does thickness and focal length of the lens relate with each other is the question apparatus that you have is an illuminated object which uh, can be used as a source of light or which has which produces the light rays as well screen selection of different lens thickness of lens as, and the lens holder so basically from here you can change the value of t change the thickness of the lens screen at which you need to form the image meter rule to measure the value of t to measure the value of u to measure the value of v 30 centimeter rule to measure the smaller distances for example the thickness of the lens two rectangular wooden blocks with the longest side of each block longer than the diameter of the lens okay we'll just check it out why do we need this one you're not required to do this investigation means you don't need to answer 
that what is the relation between thickness of the lens and focal length you don't need to answer for this one all you have to do is to come up with a plan to come up with an experiment to find the relation between thickness and focal length what is the relation between these two that's not part of the question how do we find the relation between these two that is part of the question draw a diagram to show the arrangement of the apparatus labeling u and v so for the first part i'm going to show you how do we draw the diagram so here's a salt copy so this is the diagram that you can draw for this situation so what do i have here on the left side of the lens i placed an object this is an illuminated object consider it as a light bulb or anything matter of fact you can draw a ray diagram as well but i i'd prefer that you draw the actual diagram then i'm holding the lens in a holder as you can see over here then on the right side image would be formed on the screen and the screen is placed on some support and the distance between the object and the lens object and the lens is represented by you the distance between object sorry lens and the screen or lens and the image is represented by v at the bottom i have mirror rule by which I can find the distance between or I can find the values of u and v also you can find the value of t as well the thickness of the lens as well so this is how you draw the diagram or use the apparatus for this case the second one is describe briefly how would you do the investigation including the measurements that you would take explain briefly how will you determine the thickness of each lens you may use you may draw a diagram if it helps your explanation well the thickness of lens you cannot measure it directly with the mirror rule so that's why you have two rectangular blocks so what you do is place the rect uh, lens securely between the two rectangular blocks like this these are your two rectangular blocks and find the distance between these two rectangular blocks with a ruler 30 centimeter ruler find this distance now this distance would be easy to calculate but if you're trying to measure the thickness of the lens directly it would be difficult because it's a uh, the lens is kind of curved and it would be difficult for you to measure the thickness so you place these two rectangular blocks, wooden blocks, uh, and measure the separation between two blocks. So done with this one as well, separation as well. Explain how would you do the investigation, in, including the measurements that you would take. All right, so we can find the thickness directly from the ruler but in order to find the focal length we need to find these values first we need to find the value of u we need to find the value of v and then we need to apply the formula before we need to apply the formula we need to ensure that a sharp image of the object is formed on the screen only then we record those values of u and v so this is what we do we take a random lens or let's say we take the smallest one the thinnest one first and its thickness is measured by placing the lens in the wooden blocks and measuring the spacing between the two blocks this is how you measure the thickness of the lens then we ensure that a sharp image of the object is produced on the screen and in order to do that we may um, might be needed to move the object forward or backward or towards the lens or away from the lens unless a sharp image is produced on the right side of the lens on the screen 
as soon as you get a sharp image or when the sharp image is produced you do this thing when the sharp image is produced the values of u and the values of v are married using the meter rule and once you have the values of u and v you can calculate the focal length of the lens using the formula that is given in the question already so once you have calculated the focal length for that uh, for the lens of that thickness you change the lens you bring a lens of different thickness and measure all the values for that lens as well first you make a sharp image using that lens once you have a sharp image you find the value of u you find the value of p you record it on the table you find the value of the focal length using the formula and then you compare the value of focal length and the value of thickness of the lens then you can draw the table over here i have the thickness of the lens which has to be compared by focal length of the lens but in order to find the focal length i have to use the formula and the formula include these two things so i'll need to measure these two things first so that's why i have included in the table you measure u you measure v using the meter rule you use those values in the formula once you use in the formula you get the value of f then you can make a comparison of t and f how does the focal length of the lens varies with thickness you don't have to answer for this one all you have to do is we compare the values of t and the values of f to find a relation between the thickness of the lens and the focal length of the lens that that would be it All right, so here we have the next question. A student uses an electrical heater to heat a beaker of water. She notices the time taken to heat the beaker of the water changes when the voltage across the heater is changed. Okay. The power of the heater is given by the equation P equals to Vi where P is the potential difference and I is the current through the heater. Now, what do we need to plan? Or what is the experiment all about? Plan an investigation to determine the relation between power produced by the electrical heater, which is to be calculated by this formula, and the time taken to heat a beaker of water. So we need to find the relation between the power of the heater and the time that it is that it is required to heat the beaker of water. So these two things need to be calculated. Well, this thing can be measured directly with the help of stopwatch, but in order to find the power, you need to apply the formula voltage times current. Voltage has to be measured by voltmeter and current has to be measured by ampere meter or ammeter. That's why you have the apparatus ammeter, voltmeter. Then you need to change the power supply so you can change the value of power because we need to find the relation of power with respect to the time taken. So this can be changed, increased or decreased by using the variable power supply. We change the voltage. If we change the voltage, the power would also be changed because the formula is here. This is a container. You need the heater to heat up the water. So any other apparatus to write this thing with all the questions. You're not required to, to do the investigation means. What is the relation between the power of the heater and the time that would be required to heat up the liquid? What is the relation between these two? You don't need to find out. All you have to do is to plan the experiment to find these two things. In your plan, you should include a complete diagram 
in figure 5.1 to show the circuit that you, that you will use. So I'll show you the diagram first. So here's the solved one, once again. Yeah, here we have. So in order to find the power, I need to find voltage and current. Voltage is found by placing the voltmeter across the heater. Voltmeter is placed across. Current is found out by connecting the emitter in the path of the current. This is your power supply. Power supply and the arrow represents that it is a variable power supply. Means you can change the voltage from the knob. Variable power supply, then you have the stopwatch here. Here you have a switch as well, which can be used to switch the circuit to on or off. Then you have a thermometer. Thermometer is there to find the readings of the temperature. And thermometer I'm not placing directly. You can place directly as well. I mean, it doesn't make much of a difference, but I'm placing the thermometer with the help of this strip, which would allow the bulb of the thermometer to touch the liquid and the thermometer would not the entire thermometer would not fall in the water but you can just place it directly as well all right so that was the first part which is a part for the diagram the next thing is explain briefly how would you do this investigation state the key variables to control draw a table explain how would you you would use how would you would use the results to reach a conclusion and once again for six marks we have this one now firstly we need to vary the power power of the heater and we need to find how much time the water takes to reach a certain temperature so this is the bottom line this is what you need to figure out you need to figure out once again i'm repeating the same thing you need to figure out at a certain power of the electrical heater how much time the container water container takes to reach a certain temperature now I've divided into different sections all right and it's a very detailed explanation there's a lot of stuff that you can omit from here once you're making it more precise I just wrote down the detailed explanation for the sake of understanding first of all a circuit is completed as shown in the figure 4.1 all right after that I take fixed amount of water in a container then I note down the initial temperature of the water because uh, I need to know the starting temperature of the water so once I'll know the final temperature only then I can find the difference in temperature then you have this thing over here circuit is switched on and and the water circuit is switched on and the water starts heating up and the stopwatch is started um, and the water is a, a, an extra thing written circuit is switched on stopwatch is started and the water is heated to a fixed temperature and the water is heated to a fixed temperature once that temperature is reached stopwatch is stopped so for instance let's say your starting temperature was 25 degrees celsius and after uh, you let the temperature of the container reach let's say 80 degrees celsius right soon as it reaches 80 degrees celsius you stop the stopwatch and let's say during that time it took two minutes 
So you note down that reading of the time from the stopwatch. And also you note down the readings of the voltage and the readings of the current from the meters. All right. We'll write it down. We'll write down that one as well. Once the temperature reaches, uh, once that temperature is reached, stop the stopwatch. Voltage and current readings are to be obtained from the voltmeter and ammeter respectively and are recorded in the table to find the power of the heater using the formula P equals to VI. We can't find the power directly, we find the reading of voltage, we find the reading of current, then we find power. And the time taken for that change in temperature is also recorded in the table. And what is the control variable? Once again, the control variable is the initial temperature in all the cases should be same or the amount of water in all the cases should be same. State the key variables to control. So I can write it over here. Uh, initial temperature for all the cases should be same. Initial temperature for all cases should be same. So we can make a fair comparison. So voltage is varied from the power supply. Voltage is varied from the power supply to take readings at new value of power. Once you vary the voltage, the power would also be changed because according to the formula V equals P equals to V times I. If the voltage is changed, if the voltage is increased, the power would also be increased. And the process is repeated for three to four times. Now, how do you come to the conclusion? Well, you can just simply draw the graph of power against time power against time whatever the data is let's say the graph is a straight line which is not going to be a straight line but we don't care about it let's say the graph is a straight line it will tell you the relation between power and the time required to heat the container or the shape of the graph is this whatever the shape is you can come to the conclusion from there but once again what is the conclusion Will that be a straight line? Will that be a curve? You don't have to answer for that one. How, how would you read the conclusion? Or how do you come to the conclusion? By drawing the graph. That's it. That's the end of the answer. All you have to do is to answer for the fact, how do you reach to the conclusion? What is the conclusion? Not part of the question.